Hey everybody, it's BJ. Hey y'all, I'm Aletha. And this is another episode of Off the Record. And uh, we have had a lively time this morning, haven't we? Well, I got a little spun up <laughs> about some stuff, but I mean, it's fine. But, but then you drug me in here, and I don't know what we're in here to talk about. The, the things you got spun up, you said we were absolutely unequivocally not talking nope, about those items. No, nope, because then people would have negative things to say about me. You don't like constructive criticism? Constructive? What you can constructively criticize me about in my own opinion? Yes, I can take constructive criticism. Absolutely. I welcome that. But not on my own opinion about national issues of sort. No, I don't want to hear that. That's not your critique. That's just your opinion. And then people are going to say stuff to me, and then they're going to make me mad, and I'm going to cuss people out, and then we've got a whole problem. So, no, there are certain things we're not talking about. Absolutely not. I, this is <laughs> Why are you laughing? Me. Because this is the reason why I said we got to go in here and hit record. <laughs> because it took just like that, and you were off on it again. It's so much fun. Because I know how people are. I don't right. have you time don't, for all that. That's I, why I told you what, I don't mess with none of this. You, mess with the show once you do what it. What you don't like, you don't like fake people. I do not. You want somebody to tell you how it is. I would rather them do that. To be yeah. honest with you. Yeah. Than, than to, to do like what I do, which is kind of. Politically massaged. The yeah, like you try to make me be fake. You want to know what this is? <laughs> He's talking about you need to get me that piece of paper, Norm Jean, spit that gum. I'm not spitting my gum out. This is not a performance. I am not in a pageant to be judged. I'm not going on a national syndicated talk show. No, the last person that made me spit gum out of my mouth was Edwin Bradbury in the eighth grade band while I was trying to chew gum and play my instrument. Oh my gosh, that hit deep. Well, he used to tell us he was going to make us put it behind our ear uh -huh. if we didn't do it because it would mess the instrument up. That's a whole other thing. I ain't taking my gum out. So, yes, I like people to be just who they are. I am a gum chewer. I happen to be chewing gum right now, and I'm not changing that just because of the lights. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. <laughs> it has been so much fun this morning. I was like, we are going to... Look, I, I told Norma Jean in a, in a text, I said... Oh, I'm sure. I said, I said you need to get Lisa to do off the record. She said, no, I'm not. And then and then I sent I sent a separate separate one to Ray and I said, Ray, and you need to get Lisa to do off the record. She said, I'm too scared to. <laughs> like, so is Norma Jean. <laughs> so uh, what's been happening? What's been happening? Uh, uh, your daughter had family's weekend at App State. That was a blast. It was. We went to Boone. My daughter is not like me. She didn't do want to do none of the exciting, partying, fun, tailgating things. So how was the football game? We didn't go. We why, didn't do none of that. Why didn't you go to the football game on Parrot's weekend? Because she didn't want to. So yeah, what did y'all do? Whatever she wanted to do. Ate food she didn't have to pay for. <laughs> we <laughs> went did things she didn't have to pay for. Well, that's what happens when you're in college. You, your parents pay for everything. Yeah, I reckon you're right about that. But I, I Is reckon she working she, anywhere yet? No. No. Is that a sore subject? Not really. I mean, I, she's. I, I told her while we were there, I was like, uh, you're going to have to get a job. You know, that's what's going to have to happen. I agree with her taking some time to adjust there right. I get that. and all of that, and that's fine. And I, along with her dad, will make sure that her needs are met and she has the things she needs, like a lot of the gear and stuff she's going to have to have for the winners up there, making sure she's got that kind of stuff. But if you want to walk to cook out at 2 o'clock in the morning and go get a Starbucks three times a day, I'm not paying for that. Mm -hmm. You're old enough to get your own job and help support yourself a little bit. She don't have a car payment. She don't have to pay her car insurance. She don't have to pay her cell phone. I ain't buying her coffee no more. I'm done. Right. So if she wants to do all that, she can go get a job. So from this lady who was weeping and, and crying just just a month and a half ago, she's already said, I'm done. Yeah, I'm not doing it. You can you are old enough now to handle yourself. You just she just turned eighteen on Sunday. Right. My daughter turned eighteen on oh, Sunday. Oh, congratulations. And so I mean, I'm just saying if she can vote, she can pay for her own coffee. Uh, That's how I feel. So like I actually it. had a conversation in the office the other day. I'm still, even at 41, of the mindset that if you are 18 and you can go into the select service, meaning you could end up being drafted, you could go in the military, if you can take a bullet for our country, you, you daggone better be able to buy cigarettes and drink beer. I agree with that. I, I still, to this day, Either believe that. Either that or up the age that you can go in. Whatever. That's right. That, that's the way I've all, I've, I've all you know, you, you certainly feel that way when you're 18. Right? Yeah. But even at 41, I'm going, it just still doesn't make sense. Yeah, I agree with that. We were sending our boys over to, to D-Day, you know, 
it, to get off the the the, the boats and and to, to go storm the beaches of Normandy. Yet they couldn't buy they couldn't buy alcohol. I mean, just it just still to this day. Well, that's what that's part of the problem that we have. The children in this generation have never had to really do anything, mm-hmm. and now, they've not really gone the, through anything. This, you, the, know? you and I had this discussion not too long ago, but this this generation is enjoying the benefits of the previous generation, mm-hmm. which is ours, mm-hmm. which is which we're enjoying the benefits oh, of the y'all previous. Welcome for that. <laughs> you <laughs> speaking of that, we were at we were where were we at lunch yesterday. And we were talking about, uh, you, you know, someone said um, about being being hired here. And uh, Letha said, well, ain't none of y'all here. Uh, all y'all are here because I like you, so you're welcome. I said, yeah, I said BJ would never hire anybody if I, if I didn't like them. And you said that's true. And I was like, y'all welcome. <laughs> <laughs> There is there is <laughs> there is something that is important about the culture here yeah, it that is. we true. Want, because we're so close and, and and work on top of each other we have conversations all the time I mean it's it's nothing to be able to reach over and tap somebody on the yeah. shoulder I mean that's how close we are uh, or, or to, to spit the gum at somebody you know I mean we're that close to each other so the culture of this office is important Did you just say spit gum out at somebody Yeah because I was uh, thinking about you still need to spit that gum, I <laughs> gum out especially when you gum out. especially when you're blowing bubbles right here. Look, I am who I am. I'm not about to change that just because the lights are on. Well, I've, I've actually, since our last recording, I've been able to do something I really love, and that's going, going to speak to students. I went to East Carolina University last that's week, right. and I went to North and North High School today. I loved it. And I actually gave two different talks. One was more of a philosophical, this is how I started News News, Magic My Media, this is mm-hmm. why. Today's talk, North and North, I actually went to the, to the back to... The, the phases of me actually showcasing this is what I sent to investors. This is this is how the business will actually yeah. work on paper and uh, how much of that really did come to fruition and how much of that really didn't. It's kind of interesting to go back and look. Well, I think it's great that you do that. Yeah, I really I love do. It. All jokes aside, because mm-hmm. you never know with me when right. you think I'm about to hit you in a punchline. <laughs> or when you're about but to I, give me a compliment, yeah, you never know. But I'm, I'm, not, I'm being serious. I think it's great that you do that. And the truth is, there's somebody sitting in that room that's going to have an impact in, uh, in on them in some way. And even if it's just one person, one young person, you know, mm-hmm. that you can inspire or make them dream bigger than they did before, mm-hmm. then that's that's worth more than all the money in the world to me, in my opinion. Yes, because like I told them at, at ACU, I said, when you think of entrepreneurs, I mean, a lot of people, because of social media, we think of, you know, these private jets, you, you, you're slow walking and getting out of the plane with your, your suit on with the GQ glasses yeah. and all. And, and when you open up a briefcase, there's there's cash just falling out of it. I said, that that is a farce. That's not yeah. the way being an entrepreneur is. I said... And I told these kids this morning, I said, do you know how much in 2017, how much our business earned? And they were, I mean, they were throwing out some big numbers. And I was like, $43,000. <laughs> right? Like, I said, I said, now, now, I said, now, granted, if I wrote you a check for $40,000 today, would that excite you? And the answer is yes. Right? I'd mm-hmm. be thrilled. I said, if you did a scratch off ticket today and it was forty grand, yeah. you'd be excited about it. I said, I said, but to grow a business over an entire year and try to hire employees, I said, it's it's peanuts to what yeah. you're available. To. It's, it's nothing in the business mm-hmm. world. And uh, so I was trying to put in perspective, you're not going to come out of college thinking you're going to make $120,000 a year. That's not the way it works. You got to work. That's exactly right. Mm-hmm. And that's what most people don't want to do is actually put the work in. You know, everybody wants to be famous. Everybody wants to be known. Everybody wants to have all this money and all that kind of stuff. And then people see in social media has ruined that a lot because social media only shows one slice of something, mm-hmm. one moment of something. Like you said about our journey vlog, you know, people say, you know, it looks like y'all have so much fun while you're working. We do. But those are just moments sometimes as small as three or four minutes out of a day sometimes out of two days Mm -hmm. you know and you only see that you're not seeing the full picture and social media has ruined us in that because they show us what it it, what it does to young people is it paints the wrong picture Mm -hmm. to what it really means to be successful you know and and so then they start chasing after that and not understanding that you know it's like we used to say in church the old ladies, you know, the people used to say in church, you know, you you see my glory, you don't know my story. Oh, mm-hmm. you know, and right. it's the people who understand the importance of the journey and the story 
that it took to get to where they were and that stay humble about it. Those are the kind of people that you want to follow if you want to follow somebody or listen to or be inspired by. But don't just trust the stuff you see on social media because no, I'm telling it, you, it's it, not reality. And even then, because because you we can't like literally document all 24 hours in a day and showcase uh, like some of the, the the Zoom calls I've had even this week or the the like I was gone Monday. Uh, uh, I was out of town, and you said for the first three hours of work here, there was hardly you could hear. You hear could have heard, heard a pin drop. Right. Yeah, it, but that's not entertaining, so people won't watch right. that. Uh, or so the we, hard parts when we make mistakes and we mess up, mm-hmm. or you have a, a challenge with a client, or right. like I you fired a, a client heated, recently. Yeah, or you have a heated conversation with someone when you're trying to work through something. Like there's much more to being successful than just how much money you have in your bank. And it takes a lot to get there. Mm -hmm. And a lot depends on how you define success. And I think that's sort of my point is that social media has redefined what it really means to be successful. And it's not in a good way. And it's not in uh, an accurate way. You know what I realized this morning as I was giving the talk at North and Or to a business class, Mr. Wallace's business class, I was really thankful for that invitation, was that I made the statement that, one, that I remember pre-internet. Yeah, me too. Right. Yeah. And and one person asked about, you know, what was it? I had I did have the question at the end. When you actually started, what did you do? I said, I took my cell phone out and I recorded. And I said, that's the way. And so I said, and we do a lot of that still today, but we have all these other tools right. at our disposal that we probably got $30,000 worth of just equipment at our disposal now and, you know, so we've got equipment, but even still, this is where I started. Right. And I started with an idea and a cell phone, and I just put myself out there. And you know what? This December will be five years that we've been able to, to do this. Yes, you've been with us, what, for three? I started over about three? three months after you started New News. News. So mm-hmm. that was uh, July when we all, July of 2018 is when we launched. So you were you were like the next month. You were like August yeah. of, 20, uh, of 2018. I am the OG. You are the OG. Of right. News News. The real OG. Yeah. Um, so what else is happening? What else is going on? Well... Today's the first day of fall. I'm a little bitter about it. Why? I, you know, I you love You still got summer. your toes out. I know. I love summer, though. It's not that I hate fall. I don't mind it. But you have to go through that whole thing where everybody gets all overly excited about it. And you have to read all their posts about their pumpkin spice and their reefs and their pumpkins in the yard. I don't care about all that. You know, mm-hmm. so that gets on my nerves. It's kind of like when the radio plays the same song, song all the time. Right. <laughs> Right. When the season changes, you've got to hear all these people saying all this stuff. And it's like, girl, just go put your pumpkin on the porch. <laughs> God. What you're really, we did it. What you're we re- did it. What you're really upset about is that you know that that means winter is coming. Yeah, I hate winter. Oh, I know. Because <laughs> I despise she, it. Uh, Aletha, I don't know how many shows we're going to do during the winter. I'm really not sure because <laughs> Aletha, like she walk in before she can get three steps in the door. She crosses the threshold and she's going, oh, it's cold. It's I ridiculous. I understand why there's what's that what's it called the um it's maybe it is just called seasonal depression mm-hmm. is that what it's actually called maybe but I but was they, thinking the word depression yeah was right. they say they say that people are more prone who suffer with that are more prone to experiencing it during the winter months or whatever because it's so gloomy and it gets dark so early and it's you're, so cold and you're not as outside as yeah often. and I I like to be. By the water, I like to be outside. I like being in the sun. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to very much miss that. So summer, R.I.P. <laughs> I do have an off-the-record commentary this week. It's something that I haven't done the last couple uh, time or two. And basically, it's just a reiteration of, of something I said recently about our school board chairman here. And it doesn't necessarily apply just to him because I think it applies to everybody. And I understood what he meant. He was basically trying to tell the community that, hey, if you have a question about uh, the, the schools, you really need to start with the teachers and go to the principal and then administration and then the school board. I certainly understand that logic, but in the same token, he admitted that we don't really know much about what happens in the schools. You know, we're not educators by our trade, uh, that w- that in and of itself, we are policymakers. And I just completely disagree with all of those statements. I think uh, certainly you're not educators, but you need to get the the training and the, the, the education of being the boots on the ground in the schools. So when you know what's going on in the schools, you understand what the needs of the parents are. You understand what the needs of the, the, the teachers and the principals and the school administrators 
administration so that when you go back to the school board so you can make the policy, you can do a better job at that. But even more, more importantly than that, I believe that at its core, anybody who is elected to office, anybody who's elected to office, absolutely their number one job is to be the representative of the people who elect them the office or or that entire uh, electorate not necessarily be a policymaker that is a part of the job but your number one job is always going to have to be the, that constituent service and representing the people as a conduit to the government and actually as a, a conduit from the government to the people so you can help communicate and bridge that gap so the people can get uh, the resources they need i don't think any elected official should ever take that for granted and that is actually what i what i heard from our school board chairman here recently and i took offense to that so much that i put uh i wrote a blog danny can you link uh the, the website news news uh, right here where i wrote a blog uh, about that so that is my soapbox for the day off the record commentary uh anything else you want to add not a thing all right this was a lot of fun you got fired up from the start and she still got that gum in her mouth i am who i am bj right you are don't change Oh, I ain't. <laughs> <laughs> Whether I give you permission to or not. Right, right. Correct. That's right. All right. Well, y'all have a great day. This is BJ. I'm Aletha. All right. Y'all have a good day. Take care. <laughs>